directors of programs, Your Excellency, our President, Mr. Maposa, the First Lady, Dr. Mutsipe, Mr. Roy Maponya, his siblings, and members of the Maponya family, His Excellency, our former President, Mr. Tabo Mpegi, His Excellency, our former President, Mr. Mosante and Mrs. Mosante, the presiding elder, other clergy present, captains of industry present, fellow mourners. Why are we gathered this morning on such a sad occasion? It's because at certain points in human history, individuals emerge who teach us the power of dreams. They believe so profoundly in pursuing a dream, and they pursue it with such tenacity and success that we begin to believe with them. They inspire hope and rekindle light even in the midst of a great darkness. In my life, I've had the rare good fortune of knowing a handful of individuals of this kind. Dr. Pixley Aisarasema was one, as was Matiba, of course, Albert Lutuli. I see some in the audience, maybe too numerous to mention. But great dreamers are not confined to politics. The most visionary individual I ever met was a businessman. He inspired me, as he inspired many of us. His name will be remembered among the icons of our nation. Dr. Richard Maponya was a giant. I feel a deep sense of loss as I speak about my friend. When his children asked that I speak this morning, I knew that this would be a difficult task. Although I've spoken at many funerals, and although I've lost many friends, I feel the burden of doing justice to a giant such as Dr. Maponya's memory. He deserves to be honored. His family, moreover, deserves to hear how much we all admired Dr. Maponya. Because it is in sharing of stories and telling of anecdotes that we find comfort. Because grief is a very tricky thing, a tricky business. For it is possible to laugh at a remembrance and feel the fullness of joy, even at, at the heart, even as your heart is overwhelmed with sorrow. Emotion is right on the surface, for our souls are raw. As someone who has experienced loss, many losses at my age, I want to encourage my late friend's children and all his family, because the valley of death is not permanent. Your hope will rise again, and I pray at this most difficult point, as we say farewell, that the Lord himself will comfort you. He is indeed a great healer. Visionary individuals tend to recognize one another, and often great friendships ensure. In this case, I think of the friendship of Dr. Maponya with a lifelong lifelong friend, Nelson Mandela. Dr. Maponya was a staunch member of the liberation movement, as has been said. He supported the struggle for freedom, and he supported me in the path I chose to pursue our liberation when I founded Inkata on the instruction of Inkos Albert Dutuli and Oliver Tambo. I remember many rallies I held in Soweto, which Dr. Maponya sometimes attended. And this was at the height of the verification campaign 
that was waged against me. At that time, many abandoned their open support for me. But Dr. Richard Maponya remained as a friend and as a patriot. He cared about our country deeply, and he believed that we each had to play the role history has cast upon us to secure our shared freedom. Dr. Maponya cared about politics, but politics was never his first love. His passion was, of course, business, and that is where he truly excelled, as has been said by many others before me. The legacy he created is visible as one traveled through Soweto. And the evidence of Dr. Maponius is everywhere, not only in the buildings and infrastructure, but in the spirit of entrepreneurship which he built. To say that he was successful is to downplay his achievements. It is one thing to take advantage of opportunities that exist. But it is quite another to create opportunities where there are none. Dr. Mapona was born into a world in which many doors were closed and many faces unfriendly. He did not have anything handed to him on a platter. Yet despite apartheid, despite hardship, despite the lack of support, resources or opportunity, he pulled himself up and became a pioneer of black entrepreneurship. He showed us what can be done if we set our minds to it and are prepared to put in long hours, hard work, and consistent effort. He taught us how to pursue a dream. I cannot speak about my friend's success without speaking about his late wife, Mrs. Marina Maponya. She was a businesswoman and successful in her own right. It was difficult to know whether it was Mrs. Maponya who inspired me. Dr. Maponya or Dr. Maponya who inspired uh, Marina. When she passed away, I think many of us expected that Dr. Maponya would be discouraged. And I myself quietly feared that he would stop pursuing his dreams. I know what it is to have a beloved wife who is once equal in every way. Because life seems impossible once they are gone. I was therefore pleased when I saw Dr. Maponya press on and continue to create success. I must say, Marina was a wonderful woman. And I remember how in the 60s, she traveled all the way to my home, Gopindangene, to invite me to be a guest on at a ball, a mannequin ball for young Sowetans. She was committed to the upliftment of young people. And in, this, in everything else, she was a good match for her husband. She had no fear of hard work. Dr. Mamponia, of course, loved to work, and he worked right into the twilight of his life. When we both became octogenarians, and we both continued to pursue our passion, I think we understood each other better than ever. When I became a nonagenarian in 2018, Dr. Maponya paid me the greatest compliment by traveling all the way to Durban to propose a toast at my birthday celebrations. I was deeply honored. And looking back, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to express my admiration for Dr. Maponya in his presence at that time when the Mangosut University of Technology honored him as he deserved. He insisted to the Vice Chancellor that I be invited, as he wanted me to be present to share that moment with him. It was a mark of our long friendship. I took the opportunity to pay tribute to him, to laud the great heights he had reached, and to thank him for inspiring us all. In years to come, when you seek to understand the nature of the man, they need only to look to his legacy. His achievements, in spite of the oppression, we lived under are actually testimony to the attributes of his spirit. Quite simply, he did wonders. And one thing that amazed me was that although he had to jump over so many hurdles and the doors were slammed in his face by the racist regime, he was never bitter. 
He was never a racist. One of the biggest challenges, Your Excellency, our president in this country, is social cohesion. It was in spite of that, I think that his life was a contribution to that. But in spite of all of that, he actually never became a racist. We still have a challenge, Your Excellency, in this country about social cohesion, as you know. Because as long as it is us and them, and not us, including all of us, then our country is not going to go very far. And standing in the light of success, it's not uncommon to forget where one comes from. But that was never the case for Dr. Richard Maponya. His social conscience was ever present. He wanted to develop our youth, to develop entrepreneurship, to develop leadership. He became a champion of both dreamers and doers because he led by example. His life is now a reminder that poverty can be overcome and race is not a defining factor. His passing is a reminder that our time is finite. If we have a dream, we must chase it now. It cannot wait for tomorrow. Dreams are there to be pursued. Several years ago, Time Magazine honored the great entrepreneur, Dr. Richard Maponya, with these words. Quote, he has spent his life subverting the established narrative, unquote. How true of, is of the man I knew and the man I called my friend. It is with tremendous sadness that I say farewell to a great South African giant. May his children, his family, and his friends be comforted, and may his admirers mourn his, this loss. South Africa has lost a giant, and may Richard Maponya rest in peace. Rubala Hante Mitsuale Waka.